Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is requirements of optical sources. In the earlier video, we have discussed the detailed working of uh, fiber optic cable. We know that in case of fiber optic cable, the innermost layer is the core layer. So this is the core layer through which actual transmission of light rays takes place. Now, we have to transmit the information in the form of light rays. So at the input end, we must connect one optical source. So source converts the information that you want to transmit in terms of light rays. These light rays travel through the fiber optic cable and at the other end, we have to make use of the detector to detect the signal and convert them back into the electrical form. So this is the general concept which we have already studied in earlier videos. Now, first let us discuss the different semiconductor materials. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the different semiconducting materials used uh, in case of optical sources? In fiber optic cable, two major types of optical sources are used. One is LED, that is light emitting diode, and another is a laser diode. So this is the list of semiconducting material which is used to manufacture the LED light emitting diode or a laser diode. First material is gallium arsenide, GAAS, gallium arsenide. So it is used for IR LED that is IR means infrared LED, LED is light emitting diode and laser diodes. The wavelength range, lambda is the notation used to indicate the wavelength. The wavelength range is 850 to 940 nanometers. Next material is gallium phosphide. So it is basically used in yellow and green region of the visible spectrum. The corresponding wavelength range is 550 to 570 nanometer. Next is INGAN, that is Indian Gallium Nitride. So, Indium Gallium Nitride is used for blue, green, and white LEDs. The wavelength range is 400 to 550 uh, nanometer. Next is Aluminium Gallium Indium Phosphide. So this material is used for red and yellow LEDs. Again, it is in the, in, in the visible spectrum and wavelength range is 590 to 650 nanometer. Next is indium phosphide. So it is basically used for uh, in case of a longer wavelength laser diodes. So wavelength range is 1300 to 1550 nanometer. Next is gallium indium arsenide phosphide. So it is used in various types of laser diodes and the wavelength range is 1200 to 1600 nanometers. So these are the general semiconductor materials used for the generation of light rays in case of LED as well as laser diode. There are two major categories of semiconductor material. One is direct band gap semiconductor materials and another is indirect band gap semiconductor materials. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this, distinguish between direct and indirect band gap semiconductor material or explain the band gap and uh, explain the direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconductor materials used for uh, optical sources. So first we'll talk about direct band gap semiconducting material. I have drawn two bands. This upper band is conduction band. This band is the conduction band. And I have shown different electrons in the conduction band. This minus sign indicates electrons. The lower band is the VB, that is valence band. Shown uh, different holes in case of valence band. Now the band gap between conduction band and valence band is energy band gap, which is EG. Usual phenomena is that whenever electron falls from conduction band to the valence band, energy is released. In case of direct band gap semiconducting material, the top of valence band, this is the valence band, this portion indicates top of valence band and this is the bottom of conduction band because this part is for conduction band. So bottom of conduction band and top of conduction band are 
at the same value of momentum so i have written top of valence band and bottom of conduction band occur at same value of momentum then electron and holes have same momentum values what does what does this mean as i said when electron falls from conduction band to the valence band energy is released out this energy means it we can say simply a photon is given out whenever electron falls from conduction band to the valence band now energy contained in that photon is given by e is equals to h nu this symbol stands for nu which is the frequency h is the planck's constant so h nu amount of energy is released a photon is released which is having energy is equals to h nu so this phenomena takes place directly that means the falling electron from conduction band directly reaches to the valence band and it recombines with the holes in the valence band so this is called electron hole recombination and it is taking place directly when electron falls falls from conduction band to the valence band so this is the case of direct band gap semiconducting material such materials are used for led and laser diode ld stands for laser diode second type is indirect band gap material again this upper portion is for conduction band where different electrons are shown lower portion is for a valence band now in this case in case of indirect band gap material the bottom portion of conduction band and top portion of valence band are not at the same value of momentum in case of a direct band gap material they were at the same value of momentum now <clears throat> whenever the electron falls from conduction band to the valence band in this case what we discussed the falling electron directly uh, gets traveled from conduction band to the valence band in this case <coughs> the falling electron attains some intermediate position intermediate value and after that it falls back to the valence band and gets recombined with the hole so naturally one extra stage is added in this case so time required for this is more compared to the uh, direct band gap material but by adding impurities we can improve the electron hole recombination uh, process uh, recombination time so this is the major difference between direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconducting materials now we'll discuss the major requirements of good optical sources from the exam point of view we may expect the direct question like this state the major requirements of a good optical sources in case of fiber optic communication system so first requirement is the emission wavelength that is the wavelength of a light ray generated by the light source this is the emission wavelength should be compatible with the loss spectrum of the glass fiber this is required in order to minimize the losses in the system next for higher data transmission the modulation capability of a source should be more than 1 gigahertz uh, this is the requirement in order to transmit the data at much higher rate next is the spectral width of source should be narrow this is required in order to minimize the dispersion taking place in the fiber optic cable we have discussed the concept of dispersion in earlier video dispersion is basically spreading of the output waveform so to minimize this spreading to minimize the dispersion the spectral width of the light source should be narrow next is the radiance of source should be as high as possible because there should be proper coupling of light source to the optical cable so the requirement is radiance radiance must be high for effective coupling of the light source to the fiber optic cable which are having small na na is numerical aperture then the generalized things like the light source whatever you are using for the fiber optical communication system should be highly reliable and its cost should be low now let us solve a numerical related to this light source and semiconducting material so the given question is calculate the emission wavelength of a light source using semiconducting material with band gap with energy band gap of 3 ev ev is electron volt so this is the given uh, band gap energy now remember the standard equation 
वन इलेक्ट्रॉन होल्ड इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो टू इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस नाइनटीन जूल्स गिवन एनर्जी इज थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन होल्ड सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ वन इलेक्ट्रॉन होल्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ जूल्स सो दिस वैल्यू मस्ट बी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ थ्री सो थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन होल्ड इज फोर पॉइंट एट जीरो सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस नाइनटीन जूल्स दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द एनर्जी सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ ई नाउ वी हैव अ वेल नोन फॉर्म्यूला ई इज इक्वल्स टू एच सी बाय लैमडा वेर ई इज द एनर्जी दिस वैल्यू इज नोन एच इज द प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टंट एंड वैल्यू ऑफ एच इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स टू सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस थर्टी फोर दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टंट सी इज द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट वी नो द स्टैंडर्ड वैल्यू थ्री इंटू टेन रेस टू एट मीटर्स पर सेकेंड लैमडा इज द वेबलेंथ दैट इज आज टू कैलकुलेट सो वी हेव टू कैलकुलेट द इमेशन वेबलेंथ फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन आई कैन रीअरेंज द वैल्यू ऑफ लैमडा लाइक दिस लैमडा इज इक्वल्स टू एच सी अपॉन ई सो सिंपली पुट द वैल्यू वैल्यू ऑफ एच इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स टू सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस थर्टी फोर इंटू सी सी इज द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट दैट इज थ्री इंटू टेन रेस टू एट अपॉन वैल्यू ऑफ एनर्जी वी जस्ट नाउ कन्वर्टेड दिस ई वी इन टर्म्स ऑफ जूल सो इट इज फोर पॉइंट एट जीरो एट जीरो सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस नाइनटीन सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस द एंसर ऑफ लैमडा विल बी फोर पॉइंट वन थ्री सिक्स इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस सेवन मीटर्स आई नीड टू कन्वर्ट दिस वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ नैनोमीटर सो इट इज फोर वन थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स नैनोमीटर सो दिस इज द दिस मच अमाउंट ऑफ अ वेवलेंथ इज इमिटेड बाय दिस लाइट सोर्स इफ यू आर यूजिंग the semiconducting material having the energy band gap of 3 electron volt so these numericals are very simple you just have to make use of only one formula and you should know the value of planck's constant so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video